we've solved so far. We just got ruthlessly spanked. What's that? We just got ruthlessly spanked. Right, yeah. the world turtle messed us up. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm like several weeks behind. Oh yeah, you're. Oh. Um... So they found an they they were going to Mirabar, and they found sort of a town closed off where everybody was sort of paranoid. Um, the name of it will come to me in a second. And uh, or show up on the map. Oh wait, that's not the one. Where's the main map? There it is. Player's map of the north. That's what it's called. Um, yeah. I'm not right now. I found it like at six o'clock. So <laughs> I will try. I'll give it a shot this week. I'll, I'll open it up this week and make sure we can, we can just jump to it, right? Mm -hmm. But it clearly, like, the pressure with D and D Beyond, like, they finally actually did something. Yes. When we first started with Roll Twenty, there were tickets for features like how the folders are managed, which is still bad, but used to be horrible that were eight or 10 years old. And they're like, yeah, we're going to fix that. That's where the development was at, right? Right. And they they got like slammed on Reddit about four or five years ago because they, they became hostile to their users on Reddit. Mm -hmm. They created complaints as an attack and stuff like that and banned people and stuff, right? Right. And it's clearly just a bunch of guys or something that are just living off this thing. So anyways, but they, they did start to do improvements the last couple of years, but that, you know, d, &D Beyond, all the Hasbro stuff and the new version and all that stuff. It's probably put pressure on them to they know that those guys are gonna just run way ahead of them with money if they're not careful, right? Right. So the D and D Beyond one is still not ready. Oblong Mirabar. Xantharos Keep. So uh you guys walk, walked up to they walked up to Xantharos Keep. There's a bunch of guys in the wall. It's, it's a, something was uh, in the Lurkwood was was disturbing people, and they sent people out to find it, and they never came back. And they sent a whole party out to find it, and never came back. And this group decided just to go see what that was, <laughs> which is, you know, I thought was a chance, but I had it at five percent. I should have had it at ninety-five percent if I thought about <laughs> it too hard. So, yeah. Um, hey, we had a new angle on Tamara there lately. Are you still here, Tamara? Anyway, so yeah, so they went out there and there was a turtle the size of an island. And here, uh, it sort of stomped around and knocked trees over. Yeah, it's okay. It stopped, stomped around and uh, knocked things over and knocked trees over on everybody and they started fighting it. And it was a battle. Everybody just about got wiped, except for Frankford. The thing that avoided possibly two to three player deaths. deaths. <laughs> A character does was Frankfurt put a wall of fire across its back, and there was a guy actually like in a in a bunker under a tree on it, uh, a, a, a young, very young, very stealth, powerful wizard, and he came up and he just put like three of the party to sleep. Everybody was scattered all over the place. Nobody knew where they where the, you know what to do. The guys were just like asleep, completely screwed. And uh, anybody who tried to fight it on their own was clearly going to die. So that is, uh, yeah. Where is that high forest road? So that's where that what happened there. And but the turtle and the guy were trying to kill them, so they ended up leaving that area. There it is. Yeah, in here. So. And it uh, they just unceremoniously dumped everybody off the trail turtle on the back at the back <laughs> as they went by. Yeah, layer, map layer, token layer. There we go. Just let me switch layers and size that. It wasn't that big? Oh, there's the layer button. So, anyways, yeah, I had to put it back on here. It was about that big. <laughs> Anyways, they fought it. Uh, they did really good, but 
it also could just stop and like deal 40 damage mostly when it felt like it and spit rocks so it did like i think what 60 one time 70 right in like a 90 foot cube it was a, it was a lot yeah <laughs> and um uh, yeah and it was you know it was on a on an easy recharge it wasn't a hard recharge so it kept coming up right yeah So yeah. Anyways, you guys survived an encounter meant for level seventeen players, but also <laughs> not meant to kill you specifically. So <laughs> look at like I survived pins. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I gotta get the main. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to get this map out of this stupid folder. Just one second. I'll just drop, drop you to it and fix it later. It gets maps into subfolders. I don't know how to get them out. So, anyways, you guys were headed to Mirror Bar. You heard multiple things about Mirror Bar. You heard um, that there was uh, definitely some kind of presence of the cult there. It was an alternate place for you to go besides Westwood, where you also killed everybody. Now, mind you, they were trying to kill you for real. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, they were trying to tie you up, anyways, but it didn't look good. No. Um, so yeah, and you know that um, you had heard that there was God, where is she? Uh, that there was a madam uh, in Miramar who might madam, oh, you, you learned in Long Saddle that there was a madam who might be friendly to people from the orphanage. Um, and you learned that from, from an innkeeper in Long Saddle and that she tended to have a lot of information about what was going on with these uh, all these disturbances and stuff that were around, including like random bandits and mysterious creatures and, you know, rangers disappearing and all that stuff that she tends to know things, she tends to know things because she's told things and she tends to know things because she knows things with her crystal ball and all that. <clears throat> um, and you were given, uh, you were given her full name, which is like a secret passcode. Instead of the madam, you were told her name, which I, my notes are no longer familiar. <laughs> <laughs> but you were given her name, anyways, Kessel, Kessel, the Madam, the Madam Kessel. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, that she might have information for you, and if anybody knew where Bob was, she might be able to, particularly for a fee, she might be able to tell you where he is. She's very good at finding people, but she's very doesn't need money, but likes it, but doesn't need it. So beware not to, yeah, not to offend, offend her. So that's what this guy thought anyway, so just keep her. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, and I have a cold, so that's why I'm Right off the bat, I'm like, I'm not coming in person giving this to anybody. So. Also, as of yesterday, I didn't know how much worse it would be today. <laughs> so, only slightly. So. Uh, so are we heading into Mirror Bar then? Is that is that what the general what consensus you, is? It was what you said. You have all options and all roads before you because it's me. So <laughs> it is what you said you were going to do. You do not have to do something because of that. Um, you do know that there's a the rabbit cult has got a presence there. That's the report. Uh, as maybe has abducted people there, and you know that uh, this madam is there, uh, and that um, Bob was reported. It's Bob's original reported destination went to an oblong. Right, and we're looking for Bob. And that wasn't confirmed. That was, I believe, he was going to Mirabar so, uh, when you would stop back at oblongs. Where is Mirabar on the map again? Oh, yeah, sorry. It's north, middle, uh, red circle. There it is. Okay, yeah. Yeah. You, this is uh, Xanthar's Keep. This is the Lurkwood, which very shallow into you ran into the turtle. And it continued onwards, as far as you can tell, towards the coast, which makes sense to Kelp and, and Frankfurt. Except for there's a mountain problem there, but you assume it'll figure it out. All right. 
we head back to Xanthar's keep, yep. battered and bloody. Okay. So you come up on the walls there, and those two same guys are there, and they're looking at you kind of funny, and they're like, did you go all the way in? Did, how did you, you made it? You yeah, see that so... And you, there's an obvious, you're following an obvious trail of turtle destruction nearby the road. And it's like, there's like trees that have dropped and fallen off it, like um, around here and stuff, and it clearly like, like past the keep without hurting anything. Okay. And uh, there's, there's a new like highway heading off towards the ocean somewhere, right? So, Uru's gonna say, Yeah, we, we chased it away, and he's going to bluff that we chased it away. Well, that's um, close enough to the truth. So, roll a persuasion with advantage. Yeah, it's so close to the truth that it's one of those easy to tell lies, right? So, yeah, uh. You did, you know, really chase it away, but you chased it and it went away. <laughs> yeah, uh, 27. Oh, 27? All right. He's like, wow. Oh, like, how, oh my God, you guys, are you... Do you um, have a place to sleep? Are you... Of course, <laughs> of course. Of course. Uh, uh, he looks at you. He comes down from his little, like, sort of perch, which is in the top of the wall. Or there's a little perch there, right, that they have just to be a little higher to give the hydrant. And he's like, oh mm -hmm. my God, you guys must be, like, are you some of the legendary heroes? Like, are you, are you related to uh, them? Like, we're just, you, we're just looking you... for Bob. Ah, uh, Bob. This guy. Yeah. Is that? I haven't seen him in weeks. He always introduces himself as Bob. Bob is very gregarious, by the way. Yes. You know, he's the Home Depot greeter, right? Sort of the so sort of that guy, right? So I know it's Child Depot, but he's the Home Depot greeter. So like a Walmart here, but he's a child depot creator, right? So <laughs> he's a yeah. So no, I haven't seen him in weeks, but uh, oh, what what direction if, was he going? He helped, that would make sense. Uh, that would go. Yeah. We're just uh, checking in on him and following his. You know, can can we find a place to to sleep? Maybe we're a little. It's all all this combination of food and everything is on us. All right. Oh, that that'd be lovely. I'll check it. Your voice cut out. I'll check this in a little bit. I'm sure. I cannot believe it. Is so, that cutting out for anyone yeah, else? Yeah, I can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, hold on a second. Let me see what uh, what thing has the mic. Now it works. Maybe. Oh, that's why. It's the webcam mic, which I'm turned away from. So, hold on a sec. How about now? Is that any better? Yeah. How's Much that better. Now? Yeah, yeah. So, so far, so good. good. Moving my head all over the place. One, two, three, four. Talking low. All that stuff is good. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's the mic I usually have on the webcam mic. It, you know, Discord it switches on its own, right? So, yeah, it does its own thing. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, yeah. Um. And um. Um. So. Anyways, and he just asks. He's like, he turns to to. So Drew, and he's like, um, "Are you, are you Mako? Are you, is that who you are, man? That, like, you must be one of the heroes that defeated that, driven that, that away." Uh, no, just some humble adventures. You have a, like a, and he's all excited, and you can tell he's a fanboy. He's like, "Do you have like a group name or something?" Like, cause like you could be the heroes of. Do we, do we have a group name? <laughs> Uh, was it Sofa? Oh yeah, we're Sofa. <laughs> oh, not like the you wouldn't like like the heroes of Xanathar's Keep or the defenders of the Lurkwood or anything. Uh, no, no so, we're the uh, Society of Fish Admirers. He looks at you with the tilty golden retriever head. I okay. smile with blood dripping off of me from everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, may do more than just fish. Oh, turtles too, I guess, eh? Turtles do. Really, a lot of aquatic stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, well, I mean, there's a blue person, a turtle, and a lizard, so. <laughs> um, the keep itself, he, he invites you in, he starts into the interest of the other guys. Like, these are the guys that chased away the, the creature. Um, they chased it away somehow. The keep itself is on a little bluff that's almost circular. You have to walk up the road to get to it there. 
um, there is a path past it, but he, uh, but he just opens up the gates and he starts introducing you to other guards. Like these are, this is so far they, they drove the, the turtle away. Um, it's a very small place. Like it's a keep of maybe 200 people, right? So, okay. Uh, and inside is an inner wall set that sort of comes together like in a, almost a, I don't remember the name, five-sided. Anyways, <laughs> so it comes together like, so it's a little, a little narrower at the back of the wall and there's another main gate. And he's introduced to all the soldiers. He's like, these are the heroes. And everybody sort of like gives you like a small cheer. They're not sure. They can't believe somebody actually drove that thing away. Especially, he said, you, you know, I just, the, how powerful the people that were, that never came back. Like, what, did you see any signs of them? Did you see any? Injured yeah, people or time. bodies, or no, <laughs> they we thought they were the most powerful adventurers there were, but they just never came back. Maybe they maybe they got scared and ran away. I mean, you, I the guards at the front gate they they saw the turtle, right? Yep, he's it was big, yeah. Sometimes you're just standing in the wrong place and crunch from you guys' point of view. Um, if they had somebody went there like the day before. That would be like miles past where you encountered it. It was on the B line, right? Right. So you wouldn't have seen it, right? So it would have been yesterday, like maybe like 50 miles away, even, right? So, you know, uh, definitely 20. So if it kept us a pace without sleeping. So, anyways, I'm just talking about from your character's point of view, that's, that's what you, how you'd be thinking of it, right? You wouldn't have encountered it in the same place at all. <laughs> or cross the path of where they encountered it if they did. So you went out there, you got you got in this big battle and you came back. So, so yeah, um, and he's like, I'm gonna get the mayor. Like, oh, he sends, and he sends like one of the younger soldiers off to get the mayor. He's like, come to the inn, come to the inn. Inside, everything is very castle and very stone. This place was built for defense. It's on this like 30 foot, you know, sort of, sheer face of rock almost a lot in a lot of places that you can only sort of walk down one spot in the back or up the main road to the front and um inside is typical you know some you know places for workers and stuff like that little sort of mini villages there's still stone walls these these, these even these houses have been here for such a long time there's a main square on the left side there's like these little houses that are and on the right side is there's a little castle and straight ahead you can see like Obviously, the main the main square again. Their left side is these little houses. I mean, ahead you can see the main square, and uh, yeah, it's sort of surrounded by shops and stuff like that. Just a few though, like just a handful. Most of the place is very militarized, and this is obviously the place that's meant to hold this rogue. There's no doubt about that. Well, okay. It's got the big overviews. There's ballistas. There's whatever you know, see anti siege weapons. You know, you see signs of oil barrels, everything everywhere. Right, it's ready for siege. And it's meant to hold the road or help hold the road. So mm -hmm. you figure there's 100 to 200 people in here, depending on whether it's full. <coughs> so, yeah, there was like three huts outside, but everything else is inside the walls. So, yeah, and it's it's a little bustly right now. It's um, late late afternoon, and he leads you over just to the main square there and uh, says, "Here, come come rest at the end. I'll pay if nobody else." He seems too poor to pay, but that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So they said the mayor will come. So yeah. And you enter if you wish to. Do you just enter the inner? Yeah. Yeah. Everything seems on large. The up and up. What's that? Everything seems on the up and up. Oh yeah, nobody's um you're I mean he's leading you. Everybody seems to respect him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so he uh he um um this is this this in runs along there's actually a small creek that runs through this it must come from a spring because there's no way that it it does anything but bubble up or it's forced up by you've seen it done with water wheels and pumps before and this in clearly itself um um at some point had some kind of milling function or something for siege just so they could make bread and stuff right out of stores so that's what they do. They have like mills inside so that they don't have, you know, you can't keep bread for three years, but you can keep, you know, wheat and fluff and grain, right? So if you do it right, deep enough. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, but it's it's been converted into an inn. It's fairly small. It's about five or six people in it right now. 
and uh, and uh, um, and he just walks through the front door with you and says, "This is Sopa." They drove away the they drove away the the, the creature in the Lurkwood, and uh, the five people there, and it's just like cheering and innkeepers like, "Yay, hey, come on over, have a drink on me." And he's a uh, uh, he's a uh, he's a barely burly dwarf. He's about the tallest dwarf you've ever seen by about a foot. And but he's just also huge. He's just built. He's got this. Uh, um, um, what do you call it? This. Um, let me pull him up. His picture. I I sort of sketched him before. Um. Um. So he's um he's got a um like he's got yeah he's got an obviously a very long beard. You honestly could be she for all you know, right? Like <laughs> yeah, he, he can be absolutely. Horrible. What's that? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, and, uh, but he definitely is like, hey, have drinks on me. Mm-hmm. Either he's the tallest dwarf you've ever seen, or he's on some kind of stilts. Um, he has braided, sort of blonde beard like this, and a big mustache, and just like built arms and, and braces on his arms, but no obvious weapons. Um, just a, a big belt and big braces that match that are clearly custom made. And uh, some of you, who is it that speaks Dwarven? Nobody, Elvin. Nobody speaks Dwarven, right? Anyways, but you will recognize them as family crests and stuff fairly common. You see somebody aloft in a dwarf. There's a warrior or something will have the same symbol on his belt, his shield, and his hammer, right? So. Yeah. You have a necklace on? A necklace that looks like a bunny? You wouldn't be able to see that under the beard. It's such a rough Oh, beard. fair, fair. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, his, his arms are bare. He's wearing a short sort of, you know, uh, cloth tunic thing, and uh, it's like a, a royal blue kind of color. It's kind of neat. And it's got good decoration on it. He's got some braids below his beard of, of cloth uh, that are sort of part of like a, I don't know what you call those tabards or whatever on the front, right? Um, and it's all very decorative, but he's also just here serving drinks, and he offers you a drink. He says, you want some food? A room? I understand your heroes. I wouldn't say that, but a room would be lovely. All right. He says you can you can stay. There's like my nephew's staying up there, but we'll just kick him into the stable, so not a problem. All right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> he should be there. It's where it belongs, anyways. He's definitely dumb. So wow. Yeah. I walk up Kids these the days, point. you know, they don't want to work, right? So... What's that, Tamara? I just said. I just walked up to him and said, "Hi. What is your name?" Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, uh, Thrain Tallstone. So Thrain says, "I'm of the Tallstones of Mirabar, um, but uh, I come here and uh, I, I've developed a taste for the air." So, yeah, um, Mirabar. Everybody knows is a mining city, not just a town with extensive, like huge mines, rumored paths to the Underdark underworld. You know, gates, like just crazy stories for thousands of years about Mirabar. But it's definitely riddled with mines that lead into the mountains, which are riddled with mines. So So you said uh, drinks were on you? Yeah, of course. Well, they're probably on the mayor, but it doesn't matter. I'd pay for drinks for for heroes. We haven't had girls around here for like five years. Been a while. Yeah. Well, we had some. We had some. We had some yesterday, but the day before, but uh, they didn't come back. So hmm. he says in a rather practical manner. So, and uh, actually, have you seen Bob? I I don't know Bob. Who's Bob? Hmm. No, you you'd know him if he was here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, one of Bob's odd quirks is he doesn't drink. Oh, he might have stayed here if he was stopping here. If but he if does he not drink, going through, he he wouldn't see them. Yeah, yeah. So, I he might come here to eat, but he didn't introduce himself. So, so yeah. Okay, so drinks, everyone. Absolutely. 
All right, so um, he gives you the most premium ale, holds it out, you know, the, 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 the trope of the reserve cask. Yeah. It's in silver. <laughs> and he pulls out a small cask and he puts it over. And it's just like, it's really good. It's twice as good as any ale you've had in a, a while. Other, you know, you had a special liqueur that was really good, but for ale, this is really good, right? So. Hey, we, we thank him profusely. Mm. And uh, the door sort of comes open. Uh, your, your, your gentleman friend there who um, introduced himself as Carl. Carl, um, Carl took off and so I better get the mayor. And he comes back and he comes through. And this man who has like the thickest beard you've ever seen, but not very long, well trimmed, clean human man. Uh, with like lion face and a big mustache and just dark gray hair like a like a pewter color color uh very regal bearing um walks through he's got a sash and a little um shield that you realize is like uh, like with a like a lion and a, and a and a deer cut out of it they just the the, the sort of the, the symbol of the keep and uh he's got the yeah he's wearing his ceremonial robes almost of the mayor and um um, and and the uh, um, uh, Thrain says that oh hey, the new mayor's here he just says that announces it towards you and and Carl and the mayor come through the door and the mayor's like where are those heroes and obviously it's only like ten people in here including you guys <laughs> that's, that's pretty you're the one covered in blood sheepishly and... sheepishly smile and wave them over yeah I mean you're the ones covered in blood and bearing weapons so. oh yeah yeah no we haven't washed off. So, so um, yeah, and he uh, he seems when he walks towards you, you feel like Fido mm-hmm. definitely recognizes in Drew in particular. This is a person who makes friends wherever he is, but is decisive. That's the impression you get. He walks decisively. Clearly, he wears his robes and stuff like a like armor. He just walks proudly. He's like a paladin in the mayor's costume, basically, right? He walks over, but he's friendly and warm. He's got an open face. He's welcoming. He's got poofy white sleeves coming out from under the sort of drapings and uh, and two really sharp-looking rings on, good ones. And he, he just says, oh, congratulations. Everything, your stay is on us. You've done us a great service. Sofa, is it? And he says, question mark, sofa. <laughs> That's, Something about uh, fish. We- we actually originally gathered um, for uh, fish-related purposes, and we've just kept the name. And tortoises? Um, and I kind of gesture over to our various aquatic-themed <laughs> members. He looks visibly at, aquatic. Since he's been given sort of a permission, he looks um, kelp over. Like, uh, like inventorying him. <laughs> I uh, I I cheers him with my drink that we all have. It's like <laughs> he says, uh, he says, Thrain, why do I I not have a drink? And uh, obviously, Thrain gets him a drink, and he says, "Congratulations, it's, everything's on me." Were you looking for? Well, we didn't offer a reward. I'm sorry, but um, do you know any information um, about like the turtle, like where it's if it stopped, if it's we kept, didn't know it was until it walked by. <laughs> like my, I was, I was at home and like the wife's good china fell off the shelf. We're, we're actually just looking for, for <laughs> we're actually just looking for for Bob. No, no reward necessary. Um, we're say, just. He doesn't say China, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, we're from the 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 child depot, and we're just out here to do good in the world, you know. Oh, and he, his face changes a little bit, so you. Uh, Let's go, Finn. Do a insight check. Uh, Bumblebear, sorry. Yeah, I got it. I said, I said Finn, sorry. No, I just managed to say Bumblebear. <laughs> um, his face, his, his um, his face, face flashes over with a bit of a. a oh, you don't see no, this guy's on the level, Ruben. Huh? No, no, this guy's on the level. No, it just has to be explicitly. When you say the orphanage, his. Face flashes over with a momentary contemplative uh, bad taste reaction. And he says, Oh, Oblong? Yes. And he, he's back to this, but Drew and, and Peter just caught it naturally. 
Yeah. Well, some of you yeah. just might have. You've, others of you got a feeling of it, um, but you guys. We grab ignore it. it. He's buying our drinks. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just, you know, you know. And he says, "Oh, uh, that's where, oh, Bob's orphanage." Yes. Yeah, he's. Uh, we haven't seen we haven't him for a while, so. I haven't seen him in a few weeks either. Ah, shoot. Yeah. Um, we're not. Uh, we're, we're acquaintances. He says. But, oh, so. that's that's lovely. Oh, really? Uh, oh. Did you see which direction he went? Well, two weeks ago he went north, but you guys have already caught that, and it's very good out that he's been back to Oblong since then. Oh, he's been back to Oblong. So I thought this was the only route that we knew he had gone. Right. So you, anybody who's seen him go north was before his last trip north. Okay. So you guys so we have know no that idea he's where he gone is. north, gone back home, and then left again, but nobody's seen him on the left again trip. Okay, so we, we got to turn around. It's not the right time. It's like before the right time, right? Right. So, so um, oh. yeah, no, but I mean, sometimes we only see him when he goes south. Depends, right? So, well, uh, I look at the mayor. I say we're we're glad to have helped, um, but if he hasn't been here for a couple of weeks, um, we'll probably head south from here, I guess. And I look over at the other guys. Mm -hmm. um, one second. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I just say, you know, Bob sometimes has other ways than getting down on the road. Right. So yeah. Still like, be here. I were taking a look um, around. We, are we actually, in, is this in Mirabar or is this? I'm, no, you're in Xanthar's Keep inside the castle, inside the, not the castle, but the walls around the castle. So, okay. Yeah. I've always still head up to Mirabar because there is at least some leads up there we can follow. We don't have anything else at the moment. Um, he okay, says, that, well, that's you're, reasonable. He says, well, hold on. If you're, if you're friends of Bob's, well, that's always a thing, isn't it? And he just sort of smiles and you catch a little implication in that. But anyways, <laughs> he says, um, well, and so you're orphans, right? We are. Yes. And, and the of the bunch. But well trained, I guess, by the by the by the um, and we we've been out in the world a little bit. Well trained by the and he, he hesitates for the word uh, by the by the orphanage and you Drew thinks he might have been about to say cult. <laughs> we <laughs> not a cult. The peel has the same thing. Did you? He didn't say it. Did somebody say not a cult? Uh, I did. Yeah, Peter. Peter would just say that. Like, of course, that. not a cult. Not a cult. I mean, how could cultists? <laughs> You know, not on the side of good, you know, defeat such creature without even really looks apparently harming it seriously. Because it seemed to have fire scars on its back, they reported that. But uh but didn't seem to be uh, you know mortally wounded, so but yet you drove it off. That's amazing. It didn't seem like a creature that needed to be killed out of malice. So, yeah, I mean, and you did that and you were trained at the uh, orphanage. <laughs> Not a cult, not a cult, of course. It's an orphanage. No, 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 no. no it was a wonderful no. service for everybody around. Those, I mean, who listens to rumors, anyways? Um, and then his facade stops slipping at all. He's like, well, it's very gregarious. He says, I have a, a friend in, in, in Mirabar you could speak with. Oh. Um, he might, if, if Bob has entered recently, he might know. He tends to know, let's call it half of what goes on in the city. So you got a 50 50 chance of. Should we should we just drop your name when we see him? Oh, absolutely. You'll you'll um, you'll want to you'll want to. He's a bit theatrical in his mystery, so hmm. he says um, um, he says uh, put a band a, a small band of orange cloth on one of the left wrists of one of you, and he'll contact you. But honestly, it's all theater. Um, Excellent. Yeah. his name is his name is Barrick. And just yeah, just just tell them I told you to put the band on your arm, and he'll he'll know. Um, Thank. That's very, very 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 theatrical. He's read too many stories about dashing thieves in the night. Too many romances. <laughs> Has Drew heard of this guy in his business dealings at all? No. No. All right. Not unless Drew spent a lot of time in Mirabar. So uh, no, oh, really, no. So you'll you'll well, know him. He'll he'll know you and and. When you feel like, you feel like when, like, 
like you're being watched and followed by somebody and then you meet them. Uh, he describes him. He says he's got, you know, he's a he's very cunning in his own mind. Uh, and he's got, uh, you know, he's dark with messy, like a dark, messy hair. And, and you'll just know he's very theatrical about it. So. You ever see those guys who do the the false magic on the stage and they put, make poop out and bring the smoke out of it anywhere and anywhere? <laughs> Only kids are entertained because why would you? Just go Joe from uh, Arrested Development. Yeah, but where the lighter fluid magic. come from? The illusion. Go see, see real magic, right? You know, like you, you can do that. I guess anybody with money. I guess some people are too poor. He says, but I don't know. I haven't been to the city in many, many years. But um, he says, uh, yeah, the uh, the he's just he's one of those guys. So, so yeah, but uh, yeah, just he does. He is good at gathering information. People like him. He feels harmless to them, even though he's fright. He startles them. <laughs> yeah, Barrick. You want to see Barrick? Somebody write it down. Got it. But <laughs> add it to your group notes, please. I and you're also to see the Madame Kessel. All right. And this is uh the guys you met here are Thrain, the the bartender, and this is the mayor whose name is not on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor. So <laughs> I'm the of my yeah. <laughs> I apparently did not write it down on this on the, on the new notes. I'm transitioning further to the cloud, so I'm trying to get everything to the cloud. Because it turns out that uh, OneNote doesn't really exist properly and fully in the Microsoft 365 environments. That was fun after I saw it. like a day one time organizing everything. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's there, but it, on the list of apps, but it doesn't have the same features. So. Anyway, so yeah, he. Uh, um, do you, you get the impression this this mayor was clear and fair and sharp and it was uh, both everybody who's tend to tends to perceive that thing would say charismatic would vote for him just because you know he would communicate properly with everybody. He'd get things done. Yeah. So yeah, and you guys are going to head to Mirror Bar. Are you going to rest? Do you need a rest? Yes, I think we need to very sleep. badly. We need a long rest. We'll head to Mirror Bar tomorrow. Yep. And like, uh, do, you, do, yep. do you need some? Do you need some? Do you need to see the healer? Uh, you, you have the healer to your rooms. You have a, a, a night's a night's rest would do us good, I think. Is there a right. priest in this town, or like a, a kind of a powerful priest, uh, a cleric? Uh, do you need anything? To, he's he comes up with an elegant way to say. Um, um, he says, um, "Do you need anything that?" Some priests would refuse. Some good priests, goodly priests, would refuse to give you. Uh no, we just need a restoration. Oh, oh, okay. Um, well, there's, there's, um, um, there's Markle. He, he's, but he's, he's, uh, he'd be better off in Mirabar if it's a major okay. problem. Is anybody, are anybody's legs showing? Uh, I don't think so. But nope. uh, that's, what I was going, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Mine are, about. but they uh, are not scared. <laughs> yeah, so he says, um, you know, um, yeah, uh, there's Markle. Okay, now I think we'll check it out in Mirabar. Sounds like we'd have better luck there. Um, do you have, uh, I assume, do you have a, a fabulous armor in town? Armor? Yeah, for repairs, yeah, absolutely. All right. I mean, you guys have this amazing, he looks, that's fine quality armor you have there. Uh, particularly, I think, is Kelp wearing the stuff from underwater? I am, yes. Which yeah. includes pants, which is why yeah. I, my legs aren't showing. He um he um um he just like yeah that's some very fine armor though yeah we couldn't make better than that here that's for sure. He you know, looks like I, artisans, dwarves. So, uh, what do you need? I'm just looking for a, a breastplate. Oh oh no we don't. One of the things we don't do is we we don't trade here. The 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 the, um, the Baron sends us cash and we just get food. So in in town, it sends cash, basically, and cash to our to pay our accounts in town. And really, just more of a defensive place than a trading post. We don't. We would be a trading post if we were further flung, but but look, like right there is Miramar, right? So, yeah, well, I just figured with the defense, you'd have a some sort of armor. Oh yeah, we do. Uh, you know, you, you know, if you want a breastplate of, what are you wearing right now for armor? 
I am not wearing any armor, uh, or maybe leather armor. Uh, I forget. Um, yeah. If you want to, if you want a metal breastplate, I can provide one that'll fit you. It's not a problem. It's free of charge. No problem at all. Oh, I could pay. But if you have oh, an no, extra please one. don't. Please don't. You've solved our biggest problem in since the last uh, the last unrest. So. Sure. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll I'll take you up on that then. Um, ever since I just... uh, turned metal, it's uh. Yeah. Your skin, by the way, all of Pito's skin is, is metal and is developing uh, runic etch etchings very faintly. So he is the, actually the weirdest looking person in the group now. <laughs> and he's still char he's still charming. You can't help it. And he's weird. He's a fucking freak. So, <laughs> like, yeah, like, not Terminator, but as if somebody grew metal over all their skin. Yeah, I just feel sturdier and since I turned metal. And you, you know, the Spalding will have examined it. If you stick your finger inside his mouth, it's definitely metal, but it's as pliable as, as skin. Hmm. So it's also it's happening on the inside. So yeah, it's it's wild. But now these like faint etchings are building up. Yeah. Can anyone read them? Can he or are they are they legible? You have. Uh, please do a history check. Kelp. And one more person. Um, I could do it too because I would probably would have been interested in my yeah. why. Yeah, own body. Yeah, sure. Uh, and that's a nine. You, <laughs> history, history. Oh, I did an insight. Sorry. Uh, history. That's a nine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, because of the association, it's not that bad. I just want to see if anybody flopped it, but fun. But um, you. These are very similar to the etchings seen on this on the idols. So yeah, yeah, it could be. You can't quite read them to be sure yet, but they're it's like little faint lines. You can't quite make. You can't quite tell where one ends and one begins and stuff. But very similar, and they're just they're just they're just they're, just, they're they weren't there yesterday, and they're just a little bit there now. Sort of in certain light, you can see them. So they're not like yeah. indented or anything. No, right now they look like. Somebody somebody ran their fingers along the metal, but not like a fingerprint, but just that kind of a you know grease stain sort of thing. But certain light you can catch them. The fire flickers a certain way, and there's etchings on his skin. So yeah, so you you guys um um uh he's give, he'll give you armor, and you guys are given four rooms in the sandwich. There are only four. And you're given them all. And there's a young sort of lad about like 15, 16, clearly born of a bit of money, a young dwarven lad. And he um, he's grumbling on the way down the stairs and carrying his carrying his clothes like hastily packed. Mm -hmm. And um, um, Carl just says, come on up and just, and he's not the innkeeper. He's the guy who really the gate. And he, it shows you where the rooms are and says, make yourself comfortable. The mayor said anything you want. The mayor waits at the bottom of the stairs there, but you don't know if you don't go back. So yeah, and uh, yeah, you guys are—they're actually pretty good rooms. They're like a sturdy Super Eight kind of room. Good bed, actual, actual mattress, if not entirely free of smells. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like the medieval equivalent of mothballs to keep bugs away. Gee, I sure hope Bumbleberry catches up to us overnight. Yeah. I, I don't remember where he was. I'm sorry. What did we say? I did something in the notes. Riding his dog. He'd forgotten yeah. something at home. He caught he up with you after back. you came. So he caught up with you after you came through the gates because we had him roll as well. So. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's with you. You guys updated him at the table, told him what happened, however you wanted to describe it. Um, you can tell him on a, up here you feel fairly private. You know, magic is magic, but you can tell him what you, why you're going to Mirabar, whatever you want to tell him. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so do we go to head to bed? Sounds good. <laughs> Let's long rest and clean up and head north. And level up, I guess, at this point. 
Uh, level you. level twelve, right? Yeah, you are. Level, you are level twelve. Yeah, we are level oh, twelve. Snap. As soon as you rest, yeah. Yeah, so Peter is able to put on the breastplate in the morning. Okay. He wasn't able to do it at night. Or he could do it, just with heavy. <laughs> we were, Sam and I were talking about that, like, we've never roleplayed that your armor has to come off. You have to put it back on, it takes 10 minutes before battle and stuff. We just thought, oh, yeah, what, but... a, what a boring thing that is to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I, I think Peter physically was not proficient with our medium armor. Mm, oh, and and now he up, is. So. He wakes up, he's like, oh, I can figure this out now. Yeah, oh, no, I just, yeah right. uh, I'm so metal. I can show you how. <laughs> oh yeah, thanks. She yeah, actually just had it on backwards the whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, yeah, and uh, when you wake up in the morning, um, um, a young girl comes to the door and she knocks on on um, on Pito's door. Just be, when he first wakes up, he wakes he's woken up by the sound of this light knock. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I opened the door. She opens the door. And she's smiling. She's wearing just like a, like a sort of a thick version of a summer dress. Very nice, but like, it's like a lower, it's not a peasant, not peasants. Aware and not noble. And she comes in sort of sheepishly and she, she has a, um, a little leather pouch and she hands it to you. She, I, well, I don't know. Are you sleeping? Are you naked? Are you what? Uh, no, I'm not naked. And I think before coming to the door, I would have. Uh, uh, yeah. She wears, a, she wears a Borat Kini to sleep, actually. <laughs> That's canon now. <laughs> What's that? Borat what? Borat, Borat Kini. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, anyways, so um, she, uh, she, she comes in and she closes the door behind. Hands you this little leather thing, right? She says, "This is from the this is from the mayor." So, oh, this yes plate? No, it's a little pouch. Okay. okay. Oh yeah, he already gave me the breastplate. So the pouch. Okay. No, All the right. breastplate. She hasn't given you a breastplate. Yet. Okay. Technically, yeah, it was outside the door sure. before you went to sleep. But yeah. Sure. Um. Yeah. Okay. Let's. What's in that pouch? Um. What? Sorry. Before I grab anything from her, this is kind of weird. Um. What's Am I uh, threatened by this woman? Do I feel anything weird? I'm gonna do an insight on her. Um. Well, uh, as, you're doing insight, funny. As, you, as you're doing an insight, <laughs> there's a couple things about her. As you're doing an insight, she's quite young and very fit. Like she doesn't just sit around. And uh, as you're doing an insight, she locks the door behind her. Cool. <laughs> I'm so, okay with that, um, but I, I did do the. It's a nat twenty on the inside. Um, this is why she came here. <laughs> oh, um, so is to see you. She may have uh, seen you before. Oh, it's a fan. Um. Is oh it? yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Peter knows fans. Yeah. This yeah. Is, this is a. Yeah. What do you call it? A groupie. Groupie. New groupie. Yeah. 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 And you said she was young. Um, how young? <laughs> Roll. I think, I think Peter still has some. <laughs> Roll a D100. Peter, Peter was what? Uh, he still has some, so, uh, you know, some reservations about, like, he's not going to go after somebody that's too young. So, how you, you how said old, she was young. How old is, how old is Peter? Uh, Peter was probably like in his uh, mid to late 20s. Uh, no, actually, I think you said early 20s, right? Yeah, eight, early 20s. Yeah. Okay, medicine check. Uh, aside from her voluptuously interesting, like, just like those solid, perky bee breasts. Okay, yeah, it's, it's uh, six. Yeah, so she looks, you're honestly, the blood is flowing, she looks just fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, Peter's done this before. Um, so he He's uh he's just happy that uh women are still attracted to him in his uh uh current state. She is uh she is uh warm and gentle and friendly and wants nothing but gentleness and you can you experience enough to know that so and she stays with you for like two hours. 
so everybody else wakes up. So yeah. Cool. Uh, I make. I, what, was there actually a pouch from the mayor, or was that just uh... it was a pouch? It had uh, it had four <laughs> four rubies worth in it. Worth uh, you're not even sure quite a bit. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And uh, um, let that be a lesson to everyone: always lie. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get away with it. Um. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah. Um. Um. He. Uh, uh, so. Uh, you guys. The rest of you sort of wake up normally, maybe to some noise next door, maybe not. Um. And. Uh, um uh, uh kelp outside your outside your room is uh is a you can smell food just like outside, oh like right outside your door something very enticing you think unless they're your friends <laughs> so well, i've um, met some i've met some jerk fishes as well so i mean sometimes it's, it's <laughs> if they're bad fish then it can taste good there's a plate there's a plate of like Exquisite, but like of definitely fried squid with some fresh vegetables. They're not fried, but uh, you know, baked squid, so yeah, with fresh vegetables baked over fire or something. But it must have been in a pot or something to keep it a little, a little moist. And you haven't even seen it in lamb before. Uh, most people can't catch it, so this must have been something exotic they had maybe in the stores or something. Places like this get ice from the mountains, and it's not very far away, so. Yeah. Is there um is is the chef nearby? What's that? Sorry, what's that? Oh, sorry, there was uh, barking. Uh, uh, oh, um, I mean, is the like I assume that this squid is like being delivered or it, like it's in like the restaurant area? Is there? Somebody said outside your door quietly. Just maybe five minutes yeah, after you start. You're you're breaking up a little bit. Sorry. Oh, oh. is <laughs> somebody is there somebody you with the... No, there's not. Because they couldn't think okay. of who. <laughs> so, so no, but uh, they set uh, yeah they set that that squid there and uh, yeah that's uh, that's it's sitting outside your door and you notice a little um, package outside. Of, I don't know who slept with. In whose room besides that? Who's who's in Kelp's room? Peter was Peter was alone, but who's in Kelp's room? There's four rooms. Probably all the fish people together. I don't know. Do you feel an affinity? Okay. So uh, and also, so there's is a the small... squid alive? Sorry, is the no? It's it's baked and sautéed. Okay. Possibly okay. in its own juices, based on your expert sense of things. So. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like its own juices have been extracted and mixed with something. Somebody skilled did this. Anyways, and uh, and there's a small little uh, package with a bow on it and it has a little drawing of a turtle on it. I I'll like take the little drawing of the turtle. Um... It's a little package with a draw, little package, like a little paper box with a drawing of a turtle on it. Yeah. So, anyways, what are you what are you doing now? So you're gonna eat that stuff? Um, I mean, I like I, I, I can do a ominous. I can do a poison check. <laughs> Don't bother. It's not it's not meant to be ominous. I just need to know if you're gonna eat it or reject it at a principle. <laughs> never oh, oh, a principle. It. Yeah. Well, I think others can eat it. I mean, I was I was partially raised by squid or by a, a like octopus, so I probably wouldn't in this instance. Unless how how good does it smell? Oh, it's good. <laughs> nah, nah. I'll like call out. I'll call out. Okay, and there's a little like a little paper box with a turtle in it. Or a turtle on it, I mean, so yeah. Um, and uh, sorry, go ahead, Kelp. What do you do with the little box? 
Oh, I, I mean, oh. I would assume that I would open it. I mean, why not? Oh, there's a little brooch in it, um, like not too womanly, um, made of, of, of almost entirely of diamonds that's turtle shaped. Oh. And uh, you feel like if you think, if you feel like the squid was meant for you, you feel like that was meant for Frankfurt. Okay. Well, then I wonder, yeah. should I eat it the way that Frankfurt's eating my squid? <laughs> you can if you want. There's nothing stopping you. No, no, no. If it's it, it, if it's meant or if it feels like it's meant for Frankfurt, then I would at least like you know show it to show it to him and then see see what like Frankfurt thinks of it. Got a little gilded uh, silver on the edge of it. It looks like a knight's brooch as opposed to like a woman's ball piece. And uh, yeah. And uh, keep trying to like hand you food, like please eat yeah. some. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, and you'll find outside your room something similar, Spence, um, but it is a lizard. And it's mm, pretty clear that they... Pardon? Yeah, it's like a little diamond-shaped lizard. Yeah, yeah brooch, yeah. And uh, it was fairly valuable. Somebody's clearly made this stuff for Somebody's been up all night. Somebody's skilled. And, uh, and, and yeah. Um, um, and uh, Bumbleberry. Great big plate of ham. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> they've heard of halflings. <laughs> it's like did it, like like more than any human should eat. And you can eat it just fine. Oh, absolutely. I can eat. Tr Tr will take a slice of the ham. Yeah. And yeah, you guys are in the same room there. Yeah. And uh there's a little there's a little envelope uh Drew that uh that that uh, just says J on it. So And what's in the envelope? It is a it is a silver coin of uh, that looks fairly old, um, and you recognize it. The symbol on it as um, part of either something. There's a historical blend of a rogue or a um, uh, or a, a magician skill, right? Sort of like that. Mm -hmm. It's like a trickster skill, but a lot of them were some of the early sort of. Uh, um, 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 so certainly early famous rogues were always members of this in the stories. Um, I do so, like this mare. Yeah, it's a, it's got a, it's got a hand, um, and, and the hand is, 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 is holding uh, a purse, but in the way as if it just picked it up. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that can be seen as magic being done or something else. It can be interpreted both ways. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, anyways, and, uh, yeah, um, so that's that's the morning start. So somebody's trying to show their appreciation of giving you a lot of cash, except for that fetus stuff is worth something. So yeah, that's very cool. And uh, I think I got them all. Yes, correct. Yeah. There's a gift for each of you, so yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, I'll pin Thank mine you. somewhere, but not somewhere that's like out in the open normally, just because it'd be seem reflective and shiny. Yeah. No problem. So yeah, this coin, uh, Drew, in your estimation, is um, an art, like a, a an artisan's artifact, like just like the kind of one that somebody spent months making or a month at least, right? So, Very cool. I will put it in coin, yeah. the most protective cloth I can, and specifically not put it into a pocket pocket in my magic cloak, so it disappears forever. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you, I, the assumption is always you did not do that unless you declare so. so. Yes. <laughs> so you, just you have your other, you know, jacket. <laughs> so, yeah, anyways, um, yeah, and if you guys uh, head downstairs, um, you're greeted with more food and more breakfast, and the inn is packed wall to wall with people who are curious about you, but they've been politely waiting at the bottom of the stairs. And there's a little like subtle, like we're not sure if we should cheer or if we should be quiet and look away. There's a little, hey. I, uh, I work the room. All right. You have no problem working the room. There's like 40 people here. Um, yeah. yeah. And you, you, nobody's rich except for unless you want to go for the mayor. No, 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 not, not, no, no, not, uh, no, I don't steal from the room. No. I, um, no, no. I, there are uh, friends. 
Yeah, I, I make friends with the room. I I do small talk. I meet people's names. I say, oh, you're so and so's brother or friend, or he told me like I just make make them all feel like they've been seen and yeah. noticed and met a famous person. Thrain, uh, the bartender and innkeeper, starts um, starts introducing you to some people very specifically, um, mm -hmm. and you could uh, note him in your character sheet as like a, a very positive contact of yours. He becomes more enamored with you the more he watches you work. Yeah. Um, and Pito, what do you do with this crowd? Uh, you've got you've left this young girl behind upstairs. She said she'd just leave quietly later. Um, in the morning light, you you have a realization. Sorry, I was muted. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I uh, I would also probably uh, be doing something similar to Jeru. Um I would... Uh, Except better. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if better, but uh, I think uh, Pito probably uh, had some time this morning. Um, so he started on a ballad about the about the giant uh, uh, turtle. Um, so maybe he'd play it. All right. Pot is like the most well received ever, ever thing ever. Uh, let's see how how well he did that, though. Twenty six for performance. All right. <laughs> so I mean, just like wow, like like that is, um, that is, and 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 Thrain just says, wow, that's like, like the legendary bards. You know, they talk about it, and you think you've heard the best music ever, and then oh my gosh, you know, um, um, yeah, that that's like, uh, um. He says, like, that's like um, Storm Silverhand, which is like, this. that's like somebody just said you were, I don't know, Joe Satriani or something, right? Of, mm. of cards, so. so, yeah, it's just like, it's the biggest compliment you can get. So I thought that, you know how you get to the best meal of your life and then you realize that every other meal wasn't the best, that you thought was the best meal of your life wasn't? Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. I mean, he's just really impressed. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, spread the word. Uh, Pedal, well, you, yeah, the greatest you're... art you've ever seen. <laughs> oh, and do you do weddings? Uh, if the pays right, is it, I... it's, is it a royal wedding or? Well, in, in a couple of years, my um, my young stepdaughter is going to be going to be married. She's going to be married off to the to the one of the knights in the keep here. So. She'll, she'll be uh, around yeah, for a She's usually around in the morning. Night wedding. Uh, he, he, she's, she's, I mean, you'll recognize her. She's very stunning, but she's also, of course, you know, too young to marry at the moment. But maybe you could come back in a couple of years for her wedding. Uh, yeah, oh, sure. you know. Why not? Well, get, send, send an invitation over to Oblong. Yeah. So he's, and, and after this, this song, a woman comes out of the kitchen because she's, and she's mesmerized by the song. And she's human. He's dwarf. She walks up to him, the tallest dwarf you've ever seen, which is just a foot taller, and reaches down and puts her arm around under his armpit. And you realize that this human woman is his wife. And they have a stepdaughter. That belongs to he has a stepdaughter, I mean. So anyways, do without th that with that what you like, Peter. <laughs> uh Peter walks away. It's a joke. <laughs> so you guys at the moment can consider uh, Thrain a friend, and you can consider, um, uh, um, oh my gosh, the mayor's name is here. Um, you can, yeah, you can consider him a, 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 a strong a contact. It's Thrain for the bartender? Uh, the innkeeper is Thrain, correct. Thrain Tallstone. He'll tell you that after. He didn't use his last name much, but. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, they're definitely, um, you know, the the innkeeper in particular is is very supposed to. You recognize, uh, you all recognize him definitely in the morning as an adventurer. There's and the muscle is unbelievable even for for a dwarf. But there is a miner who was trained with weapons, or he's a full on adventurer, and the Either now or in the past. He's not that old, maybe. 
came in a club in the forties, so you know, nine year hundred. So yeah. Anyways, Spence, look at your camera. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> right. So, so we have we have made friends with the entire town. And especially friends with the innkeeper. So, yeah. Especially friends with the innkeeper. And we have a special connection when we get to um, the next city that we're heading to. So I guess we head north from here. Yeah. And uh, Barrett north. is a special connection. So if that wasn't there, does it say Barrett? You guys got that somewhere? Yeah. Okay, right, cool. V A R I K. All right. And we need orange fabric. Does anybody have orange fabric? Do you, sh should we have bought some? Um, I'm pretty sure Pedo has all sorts of colors just in case. Yeah. Well, is there anything you got in your pocket there, True? Orange oh, fabric? Yeah, I've got things. Yeah. What do you have in your pocket, True? Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um Jeru has mostly daggers. <laughs> All right. Peter, you have you have a piece of orange fabric that you think it can be repurposed that was a, a, a lady's kerchief. Um so if you wish to use it. It, yeah, it was sort of a, me a memento. Yeah, sure. Use it. Uh, we can't hear you. No, I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. Sorry. So we head north on the road. So anyways. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, all right, you guys head north and we have a break. Back right. at 8 30. All right. So, Sounds good. Sounds good. Cool. See you soon.
about Zanzibar. <laughs> What's that sound called again? Yeah. It is called Graducha. Apparently, I, I knew I'd seen that somewhere before. I think so. Oh, well, anyways. I Googled it and it brought up something playing like two different songs at the same time. <laughs> Head north. Um, there's a lot of sort of fanfare, not literally, but of people are just like waiting for you to leave town and looking at you, and everybody's trying to make sure they have a look at you. Cool. So yeah. we really are kind of bipolar on these towns. Either everyone's better, everyone loves us. <laughs> well, we didn't uh, kill the avatar of their god and set off a giant fireball in the middle of town. So like. Big pluses here. In that case, yeah, that, they that, that totally was fake us. Started it, though. That was fake us. You're right. They would not know that that was us. <laughs> but they were members of SOFA, I think. Well, maybe SOFA is a big organization. <laughs> They're members too. It was a branch group. Up to, up to 10 Ocean. people. Yeah. So, oh, um, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, there's nothing really, you know, no issue getting a mirror bar. It takes a while. Oh, you're on horses and a dog. Is, uh, Bob Mulberry Finn, you're here? Yep. Do this giant mouse that you're riding. Um, it's pretty friendly. Um, it likes to pee on corners of things, but. Other than that, it's pretty good. good. I mean, who doesn't? So it will take right? us forever to get there. Yeah. So... Yeah, they keep going after they run out. That's for sure. Um, yeah, that's about that's about um, about a half a day, uh, three quarters of a day, that kind of thing. So you guys um, started early in the morning. You're full of food. Uh, you've been given fresh rations. Um, you've been all given gift. You didn't ask for. Uh, Pito has a a shiny new plate that's. Uh, it wasn't like the best one, but it's polished like you wouldn't believe. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, I didn't even do anything for mine. They gave me a ham. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, it's. Um, a... I I really hope this turtle does not come back and destroy that place. <laughs> it's a you know it's a bit of a racial stereotype, but also true there, uh, Bumbleberry. Well, that halflings eat a lot. I mean, I do. <laughs> if you want to make a halfling happy, either give them something shiny or. Like tons of good food. And it was a good ham. Damn right. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody had been based in the all night. I mean, throughout the campaign, anytime anybody's mentioned food, Bumbleberry has said, I can eat. <laughs> he embodies that stereotype. <laughs> So, um, as you enter Mirabar, um, Drew, right away, you detect just sort of like a vague shadow pass over the sky. Is it similar to the group of people yeah, that tried it to it? It was the same thing that's happened before, before trouble. Uh, I give everybody a heads up and uh, maybe maybe we back off from the city so we don't have to kill them all. Um, and you, uh, you're just approaching the city, there and uh, you realize everybody realizes that they they noticed it, but didn't notice it quite right. So it's still there. It is. Sorry, that last part didn't come through. Oh, everybody realizes that they also saw it, but it's just like it took longer to register. So. So yeah, anyways, will you, is that your toy? So anyways, um, yeah, you have that uh, experience. What do you do now? Oh, there, there's some focus. Well, I guess in the past, this has happened, it's it's led to possession, hasn't it? Um, somebody's attacked you, yeah, and, uh, for random, apparent random reasons. I remember that fight, that guy mm -hmm. hated Drew. Yeah. Somebody keeps dropping their two and a two pound bone on my foot. Mm. Anyways, so yeah, uh, yeah, you guys are. You can just see the gates when this happens. Uh, it doesn't have any particular location. It's like a change in the sky that then passes. It's like the reverse of lightning, like a flash lightning, right? Mm -hmm. It just sort of more, I don't know, passes to something like that. Just an impression. Drew, did you say we should leave? It I, I thought as soon as I saw that darkness that we should not head into town um, and maybe see if it passes or wait it out a bit because last time it happened, we had to kill everybody. Yeah. And uh, outside of long, long, uh, long saddle, um, it happened and nothing negative happened the first time, very first time. Hard to say. Right. Wasn't it the people we met on the road and they... It is absolutely the second time it happened was all that disaster and the, the first oh, time... It, it had happened before? Yep. What, when? Only when one you... person saw it. I can't remember who noticed it. It was subtle. Now you guys are... You don't just sort of dismiss it as a flash of three leaves or something. Yeah, I, I, vote, I vote we back up and camp outside the city overnight, see if it goes away. Because it, it was like a line, right? Yeah, I, sorry, it was like a what? It was like a line in the world sort of thing. It was like a thing that passed over. But it was like, not as fast as lightning, but still the same kind of idea where the sky went this way and then just changed. So. 
yeah. And it's it's not like a wall that we go through. It's like a no, it's just like a event. Yeah, it's every. It it Um, seems like it happens everywhere, from your point of view. Never mind then. Oh no! I mean, when you did it before, you felt like you went that time that it was the first, the second time it felt like it was coming towards you, Drew. That's what you're remembering, and passed over you. But it was also everywhere. It wasn't just like localized. It just passed over you. You felt like that. Uh, this time okay. you didn't feel. So this is more like an eclipse happens rather than you walk into a wall and there's darkness and the world is darker once you pass the wall. It was definitely a very prominent thing. Before for you that last time and not as prominent this time. Imagine the last time the lightning was like really close and this time it was further away. But it still mm-hmm. passed it still passed over you. So like you feel like if it wasn't so bright bright daylight right now you if it was a little dimmer or something that you might have even felt it pass you. You're not sure. It's less it's less it has less strength and less clarity than it did last time. Yeah. Okay, so should we try to find uh, Varric then? <laughs> uh, maybe let's get settled in town first, and then because this this isn't a place where you just want to ask everybody if they've seen Bob. This would be we'd have to like specifically hunt hunt down him. Yeah, and I think there may have been some uh, leopard inactivity here. So maybe, uh, are we out of those uh, pills? Um, we only have, have one left. Remember. I think you just have one. We have <laughs> one left. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we need them here. We're 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 not hiding who we are or anything like that. It's just a bigger town. We just got to make sure we have the orange band on her wrist one person does yeah and then there is someone else that we're here to find as well is there the matron yeah and anywhere the bob would typically go like if you were bob where in this town would we go to bob is usually meeting important contacts trading people or looking for or Looking for clues to retrieve children. Are there any names that he would have mentioned about this place that we would remember? Um, You know from the past um, um, that uh, that some of the uh, some of the orphans who were gatherers have retired here. Hmm. Yeah. Would we know how to find them? So second, yeah, you would know their names. Okay. So unless you visited them before, like unless Mirabar sent to your backstory, you're probably not, not at all. aware. No. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so we we look for retired um, orphans. I guess that would be our first, most effective way of making sure that we find the right information, right? Okay. And the, the most famous, uh, yeah. So the most famous uh, 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 ex-orphan who lives here, where is your is Leona the Paladin. She sort of gained a, a, a renown for both her power and her beauty, uh, but she was one of the, well, as far as you guys know, one of the earliest um, referenced, most commonly orphans that you were taught about. And uh, she's retired here. Uh, apparently, has a uh, a little shop somewhere. So, yeah. Um, we go to a market if there is one, and we ask about her. See if we can find okay. her shop. Yeah. So, um, you enter uh, to enter mirror bars. Two things. There's obviously a, pre- a defensive gate. Um, the sort of ri- the where the rivers meet um, makes it really well defended from two angles. Um, and you can just walk in the gate. That's not an issue at all. Um, you know, I mean, um, there's somebody ready to close it at all times, but that's just normal for here. So, yeah. 
Like there's two guys there that could just close it. They're not, they don't have their hands on it. Uh, and then you have to cross this main bridge. In the river, there's a little bit of boat traffic. Um, there's these little piers in the river for small boats, um, maybe fishing and, and stuff like that, but also people that are passing by. Um, and there's the um, there's something called the Ever Pond in Mirabar. So let me just label that, um, which is really cool. It's it's basically just a, a spring, but uh, it puts out so much water into the river that it increases the flow of the river. So um, yeah, and uh, it's uh, you know you see it entrance right here off the bridge. You can see it uh, entering the river. So you'd heard about it or seen it cool. when you've been here passing through before. Um, so um, yeah, um, and uh, so. Yeah, you guys walk down through and there's a main drag and you're still in some kind of older defenses or um, something that makes the place confusing and difficult to, um, you know, I guess to invade, but, you know, not that difficult. So, you, and you can just pass through across this main bridge over here and enter this the city. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a, a central market, it's pretty well known. And there's also an indoor market. So that's really well known. What a horrible color that is. We need another one. Anyways, uh, so yeah, there's an indoor market as well. Um, so yeah, um, and so there's a, you know, traditional sort of, you know, haggling street market and then an indoor market for like higher class people. Yeah. Well, we start outside. Okay, so you guys, um, yeah, I kept revealing things in pink, but it needs to be yellow. <laughs> so you guys head over to the market. That's not an issue. Um, you get the usual uh, a baggy nice him. If Jeru sees like a young pickpocket coming or something, he's just going to. Yeah, Jeru is going to subtly signal away any pickpockets because he very clearly sees them. And um, it just... He's going to make it clear that anybody who steals from us is going to have a real bad day. So yeah, they have, ultimately, the younger sort of people or the less experienced, as soon as you make eye contact, you're not a mark anymore, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, you know, so it's the... I, I keep an eye on the group so nothing gets stolen. Yeah. I, it's not too heavy here, but it does, you know, you see a couple hostels of people looking for new people in town. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and, uh, you know, the usual beggars and people looking um this city is substantially dwarven like above ground 30 percent uh there's underground entrances everywhere um and uh again the place is you know apparently riddled with mines that go up even in a, which are like days walk away that's the rumors and there's under the river and stuff uh, the the main trade here which happens mostly outside the walls um is you know different types of stone, colored stone, precious stones. Um, this is not a jewelry place, but this is a stone place. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, yeah, you uh, at the outdoor market, um, you're asking around for Leona, I assume? Yeah. Yes. I, th um, yeah. So I, you, I, sorry, sorry, I said a cup. We might want to pick up a few more diamonds in here since we just burned through our last supply. Oh yeah, we uh, you want to trade in those rubies for diamonds, whatever we can get for them. Absolutely. Do we want to do that at the indoor market instead of the outdoor market? <laughs> Probably a good idea. Yeah, I imagine we'd get a better price there. Yeah, I imagine we'd get real diamonds there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, those three big zirconium shit they didn't hawk up for there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, I derailed you a bit there, Chris. What's that? I derailed you a bit there. I'm sorry. I don't know what you said. Sorry. I'm I derailed you a little bit. <laughs> or... Oh, well, I don't know. Can somebody tell me what his words are? There's something I don't know. I don't oh, derailed like is what he was saying. Oh, derailed. Oh, that's really fine. That's the whole point. That's what. That's what non-railroading <laughs> TV we'll, is. We'll, we'll trade those in the indoor market. But first, uh, do we hear about her at the outdoor market here? Yeah. Um, she has a shop actually in the indoor market that's actually like a permanent shop. 
Oh, That's yeah. So then we head over away from the outdoor market to the indoor market. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um... Is there a food court in the food indoor court? market? <laughs> Can we go for some A and W? <laughs> there is no, there is no lack of food at either market. You can eat whatever you can imagine. Uh, uh, nothing. This is a pretty. The dwarves are pretty straightforward, so nothing really nefarious except for aggressive negotiation happens in these town in this town. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, somebody will haggle you out for being your own if you let them. So who, whoever has the uh, the rubies, we trade those for diamonds. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's the approximate gold value for no beasts in particular? They're worth about a thousand gold each. Oh. No total. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, maybe then just is, is it a a, a three hundred gold diamond that you need for revivify? Yeah, let's see if we can get three of those, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or yep. four, if we can swing it. <laughs> hey, Pato, if you like haggling. I'll haggle. <laughs> Gotta use that metal, metal charm. <laughs> use what? what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to haggle um, and All get right. some diamonds for that thousand yeah. gold for, for uh, rubies. This market you enter, this indoor market, there, you know, there's a regular Hagler's market around the fountain there. Um, one second. Um, yeah, um, I just did a modify note. So, um, yeah, so you... Um, So you you find a, uh, a you have no trouble. So you come in and this indoor market looks like holy cow! Like this place is decorated. It's a bunch of temporary stalls down the center that are not really that temporary. Clearly, um, and this place has guards. Uh, and down the both sides of this building, so there's like four lines of stalls down the middle. Is uh, is little tiny shops like micro shops, and uh, you know where prior to can sit and negotiate privacy and stuff like that. So you clearly see that. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, you find out fairly quickly that you would need to find a jeweler on the, in the edge shops. People give you some recommendations. Um, so, oh, and dog barfed. Um, anyways, so, so um, uh, the, um, yeah, so uh, uh, I'll give you recommendations. There's, there's, there's definitely, um, um, you know, uh, oh my god. Sorry, I'm trying to find the name. Doesn't matter. So yeah, there's um there's actually uh, a jewelry shop called Markle Sparkles, which is hilarious. Um so so over on uh, uh, and he's the one that sells the raw gems the most. He otherwise you're mostly dealing with dwarves at the actual like cutting shops and stuff. Well, okay. So, but if you wanted to if you wanted to just buy like a retail diamond, this is the guy. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go get a um, maybe I'll go to the dwarves. I might have cheaper diamonds. All right. Because um, yeah, they, actually, they might... no, no, no. Sorry. Uh, needed for the spell is three hundred gold. Uh, uh, a GP for uh for diamonds. So I will just go to the jeweler, and I'll try to haggle my um four uh rubies to get four diamonds back. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, look, these were given to to the great bard Pitovar. You know, right after uh, uh, Sofa <laughs> defeated uh, Giant Turtle, um, they're worth, they're priceless. You know, you're you're ripping me off here. So you enter this little booth, which is almost like a, almost like a, you know, trailer side. Before he goes in, I fake conversations with people loudly by the booth about the great bard Pitovar and how <laughs> cool he is. And did you hear that he fought a, a turtle? Like, I heard it was two turtles and... Um, just passing by, trying to make it blend into the crowd. 
a they say minutes. he has a silver tongue. Like, <laughs> a I hear he got could... magic rubies as a reward. Yeah, a younger, uh, clearly like somebody who's on an errand for a richer person, but wearing decent clothes and stuff. Man says, "I could find a turtle," and he just keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, uh, I mean, this is you know a moderately low busy time, but there's definitely like a, uh, I know, a story of uh, sort of everybody here. But again, about the town's about thirty percent towards the the, the 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 market less. So, um, so when you enter into, into Marco Sparkles, um, uh, it's just this little room with, um, you know, what looks like a lot of uh, diamonds and rubies all over the walls. So, um, yeah. So actually just like in little glass cases, like each one has their own little glass case. And uh, you recognize that they're fairly high in value and stuff. So I guess it's, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I approach and I, uh, yeah, just uh, try to trade those four rubies that were gifted to the great Pitovar uh, for four diamonds that are worth 300 he's, GP. He's a human. He's the kind of guy who you feel like he's got almost no hair left whatsoever. Um, but he's like still only like 35 or 40 and he's been hunched over stuff a lot in his life and he just like looks at you and he's like 300 gp you insult me sir and you definitely see diamonds rubies emeralds and a lot of exotic gems here um some of them aren't very large but they're all very very precisely cut in your sort of gut opinion so this is all oh. I would, never, I would never, I would never deal in such filth. Fair. Uh, okay, I guess I'm at the wrong place. <laughs> well, he says, this might be a door market kind of trade. And he, he says, unless, unless, wait a minute, I might have some uh, Peter insight. By the way, uh, I might have some, some maybe some scrapings in the back that'll meet your needs. Uh, 11. This guy wants to do business with you. That's it. That's all you know. Um, yeah, but he seems like a snob to me and like he's trying to rip me up. So I say, yeah, sure. Um, and then uh, as soon as he gets the back, I'm going to try to steal one of the diamonds. <laughs> sure. the, the more expensive looking diamonds. All right. No problem. Uh, Slide a hand. He opens the, opens the door to the back, which you realize is like basically a closet at this point, but you know, like a fairly big closet. And he reaches around, and you can steal whatever you want. There's things that look like they're worth like five thousand bucks, but are very small, and things that are worth a, worth a thousand. And yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the for the five thousand, or if I see something worth ten thousand that I can just quickly put in my yeah. pocket or my bag, um, I'm gonna take it. And uh... these are all little sort of glass cases and. The case just opens from the front. It's not locked or anything. So. Yeah, I, I I roll a twenty-two on on uh, sleight of hand. See if you notice. So you open a, a one of the cases and you reach in and your hand goes through the uh, the 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 really beautiful finely cut emerald they saw and it just passes through. Shit. Uh, okay, I close it. You realize this is why these weren't locked. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, right. so I would also think that he could probably give us a deal because he's not doing as good as he yeah. Yeah, that's uh, getting some insight here. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll wait for him to come back. When he comes. He's just like you know, rummaging around. He comes out. And he's got a, a little tiny diamond. He's like, this one's very finely cut. You know, it's it's worth maybe six uh, seven hundred GP, uh, but you could. If it wasn't so fine, they cut. You could have it for three hundred. I'm sure, but yeah. So you know, it's so fine they cut, and you look at it and get so Jewish thing, and he's like, "Look at this. This is like it's flawless, right?" So uh, they don't. Um, I, it, we had a, it was left over. We had a big a leftover off a bigger diamond, and then we had to, hmm. had to cut it or something. They didn't want to throw it out. So yeah, I think it. it's a. Uh... There's a little, uh, well, uh, and see these rubies here. Um, they're not just like really high quality rubies. They're also, it's, it's about who owned them before too. They were owned by this, this kind of, uh, legend of a bard. Um, 
uh, stories around uh, about him spoken of uh, killing giant bunnies and chasing off big turtles. Um, so it's all it's turtles. all over the North Coast. So you fight turtles and bunnies. No, no I. Uh, Pedo fight, does pedo fights turtles and bunnies? No, no, sorry. I, I said fight turtles and bunnies, not fight the not fight turtles with bunnies. <laughs> I, I just oh, had giant, yeah. giant, giant bunnies, metallic bunnies. Pedo is is uh, smarter than I am, so he says it uh, <laughs> more elegantly. Yeah, that's probably something you know when you say it out loud. It doesn't sound that. Bad. <laughs> it doesn't sound as good. No, Peto Peto makes it sound better, and and uh, he's got that Go that thing with his Go voice where it's really melodic. Anyway, you don't uh, okay. yeah, I rolled a twenty three persuasion before. I can roll it again though, if you want. Oh, is it up there in this room? Sorry. Yeah, um, yeah, in this room. As soon as I walked yeah. in, I rolled it. You're on twenty three. That's fine. So yeah. you you think it's a, um, after you work with him for a while, you realize clearly um, as you negotiate that the. The, the thing he's holding is only worth like 300 GP, and that's why he brought it out. And he's just trying to bluff you into like paying a little more for it. Yeah, and I'm, what I'm trying to do is bluff him into giving me four, 300 yeah, he GP will give, he will give you, he will, worth of rubies. He will give you one of those for one of your rubies, which is a bargain. Yes, that's what I was trying to do. But he says, you know, I really don't have any more. I have some smaller ones and, and bigger ones. I have with the leavings, he says, with disgust in the shop that we. Sometimes we carve them up and give them to the. Okay, I'll, I'll just take one. I'll take one for one. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, but I do have this nice one that's worth about two thousand that you could have for a thousand today only. And then he becomes like the slick sales guy, and he's like, yeah, Look at this. Uh, maybe another time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were, I didn't realize you were so destitute. That's I'm sorry. He tries it as a tactic, so. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, Peter sees right through it. Um, yeah, he just says, oh, he's, uh, he's not that good at it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, Peter will, will leave. Um, he'll give Kelp Kep the one diamond. Um, right. And just maybe quickly, without taking too much more time, he'll ask around if any dwarves have some cut diamonds. Uh, with that he said, well, if you wanted one of that, one of that size, you would, have to, uh, you would have to have it cut for you. It's a very specific requirement. So. Most sure. things around here to go for more or less, right? So that's a that's a funny place, you know. Um, people don't want to show off I'm a sure diamond. Something in the HR market. People don't want to show off a, a diamond that cheap, but um, you know, um, so they usually strive for more. But then, you know, lots of people have little tiny crushed ones too for people. So you'd have to look pretty hard to maybe get somebody to make one for you. Yeah, we actually only need diamond dust for this, right? Not a full diamond. Oh, is it diamond dust? I think it just said diamond, but uh, you know, it's it's diamond diamond diamond. Diamond. Actually, actually, it says diamonds. So you can yeah, actually yeah. handle that. Well. Yeah, yeah, I'll take a handful of small ones worth three hundred GP if you got it. Yeah, you can. Um, this guy's got one that's worth dead on for you. He 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 says that uh, he could sell you some dust. That's my fault that's for not turning diamonds. <laughs> Um, I, uh, Pito, I think knows enough now, uh, uh, being around kelp and, and knows a little bit of magic to understand exactly what's needed for the spell and what oh, he yeah, wants no, to do. I, it was me that didn't, so I thought yeah. it was a single diamond. <laughs> so if, if he's got dust or, or, uh, like diamond shavings enough to do the spell four times and, uh, and I'll give him the ruby for four. Okay. Uh, do an insight, do an insight check. Okay. There's enough dust for one ruby's worth. Ah. Okay, so I will take the diamond he gave me originally, and then uh, that was a five on inside. So he gives you. The, <laughs> I'll take uh, that back. <laughs> he gives you a mint full of crumbs. Um, there, it gives you. These are the biggest pieces I have, and uh, but they were honestly, I wasn't even sure what I was going to do with them. Sometimes one of the young dwarves comes and takes them. I don't know what he does with them, but I give, you know, give them to him for very little. So I'll give you that same price. And uh, and he uh, he uh, says that'll you know that'll be three that'll be one ruby and uh, that's that's three hundred worth he says. And Sounds you... good. So yeah, so I'll take that and then I'll take the the last diamond he gave me. So yeah, I give both of those to Kelp. Yeah, no problem. I'll wrap. I'll wrap. I'll wrap the in a cloth. 
as well and give it to Kel. Sorry. Bumbleberry, can you cast it? Uh, if I have it prepared, yeah. yeah. Do you normally have it prepared? Yeah, I'll, no. give, I'll, I'll give the other I'll, one to Bumbleberry and one to Kel. Oh. Who has the dust? All right, please write down who has the dust and who has the whole diamond or the crumbs. crumbs um, I'll take the dust because I think I still have a diamond because when I used Revivify, it was, you get it free for the first time, right? Okay, so I yeah. think I still have the solid diamond from the woods people that we that gave us the diamond for their life. So I'll take the dust so in case it's somehow not enough. All right. No, I, so you guys, I, I you guys um, you know, you're touring the market. You you know where her store is. So, um, if you go and visit Leona, uh, which is I assume is the next objective, right? Yep. She's a friendly woman. She knows who you guys are right away and starts speaking the secret language. Doesn't oh, know who you trust uh, her. Yeah. And she's like, oh yeah, and she's about you know fifty five, sixty, and she is stunningly gorgeous. Um. Uh, Peter, it's one of the most beautiful women you've you've seen besides the lady, maybe, or uh, Lady M. So, um, yeah, she is, like, just stunning. And she is fit. Um, she clearly is still working out. She still has her capabilities. Um, mm -hmm. Her store is um, is um, has a few pieces of armor in it uh, that look like somebody has been scrolling, you know, on them. And she's very fascinated by your skin and asks you about it, so... Uh, your skin, the um, the etchings can be seen in more and more light. They're not etchings yet, but the marks can be seen in easier at this point now as well. So, so um, everybody's going to notice this. Um, and she asked you about it, like, what happened? Weren't you? Were, you were regular yeah, I, before, weren't you? That's what Bob said. Yeah, I, I tell her uh, all about it. Um, and uh, as I'm doing like a, a lantern or something, I'll try to just stick my hand on it to see if I'm feel any heat. Oh, she had a feel any heat couple of extra candles, and they don't seem to bother you at all. So. All right, that's, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I, I I tell her all about it. Um, and then I ask her if she what she knows about the leopard and and uh, if she's seen Bob. Um, she tells. A bunch of rumors about the leopard and very similar to everything that you've heard. Um, I I have not seen Bob. He usually comes to see me, but he, um, you know, like the dogs are losing their shit. But um, um, uh, Bob usually comes to see me, but um, um, he, he, I hear, heard people have seen him in town uh, a couple of days ago, but he didn't come to visit me, which is very unusual. He yeah, was like in town a, day a couple or two, of days ago. Somebody saw him, but like, in, in who, uh, in, who's... Insight, please. Yeah. Insight. We'll do an insight. I suck at insight. Yes, Peter. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Okay, yeah. Uh, Drew, go for it. You, you guys don't really tell me who goes into the shop. We have to clear our front. Oh, <laughs> uh, but, wait, wait, no, it doesn't matter because I'm proficient in insight. So it's actually um, 18. Okay. I can't get less How than that. How come it didn't come into there? I'm not sure. If I okay. click it on the other side, does that? The ND Beyond? Yeah. It's just being funky. But 18 right. is the correct rule. All right. No problem. Yeah, that's fine. Um, uh, she's really close to Bob. You're not sure if that's. How far that is. She's human and, and he's in pure. Um, but she's close to him and she seems actually a little hurt that he didn't come see her. So um, she has said she has green blonde hair and deep blue eyes, eyes, big scar across her cheek. Um, and so then uh, maybe maybe he wasn't here. Well, uh, so the person who saw him, you know, sounded very sure it was Bob. So well, the person who saw him was in the other city, like not this one, right? The other town. No, in Mirabar. Somebody saw him yesterday or the day before in Mirabar. But he didn't come to visit me, and, and, and she's hurt, so, yeah. So, hmm. she, he's been seen here by someone. Recently. Yeah. Who? Uh, just 
one of the other merchants here that uh, one of the actually that's visiting town, one of the traveling merchants. So. Hmm. Maybe yeah. it wasn't him because I I can't see him not visiting you. Um. She says, "Yeah, that's it's so unusual." Uh. She said it was a Vork, and you guys actually know the Vork Windwalker is somebody who knows Bob. So that's who told her that she they saw him. Yeah. So you actually know a um, merchant who comes to the bridge. So you is actually the mayor know who that person is by name. So so yeah. So we want to so we want to talk to him then. Yeah, I don't know if he's he's left yet. You could try. So he usually doesn't stay long, as you know. So. Okay. Well, uh, we're gonna go try to. Find him. Do you know where he would be? And then we'll we'll come back here and touch base with you. It's so great to see someone. I say in our language, so great to see someone from home. He is huggy. She's anti Leona, basically. Even though you guys don't really know her, um, she's happy to see you. She uh, wishes you well. She asks you about gatherings and, and you know, how many children at the orphanage and all that stuff. Uh, you know, but uh, you know, but what she's actually leading to is to ask you whether you've made friends and and you know whether you go back there often or not. She actually already knows because she talks to Bob, so she's actually just trying to talk to you. So, yeah, she's very friendly. She gives you tea. Um, yeah, that's a very nice visit with Auntie uh, Auntie Leona. So, hey, but we got to find this other guy ASAP. Yeah, yeah, we go uh, hunting for him, wherever he would be. All right. So um, she says to try um, to try at the um, at the try with the with the with any of the sort of wholesale gem sellers. If he stopped anywhere out of town on the way out of town, that would be it. Come <coughs> All right, we we do that. We go looking for him. All right. So yeah. You guys, um, yeah. So you guys go looking for him. Um, you you reach the so the general gem market, um, which is, is just like three guys with tables, uh, yeah. where they they have the raw uncut stuff, and uh, they're all they're all bars. You find out after a few minutes that <laughs> he's already left. He hasn't dropped by on the way out. I think he he was in a rush to get to to uh, to somewhere near Oblong. So yeah, he's headed out. Um, so if you can catch him at the southern gate, that'd be good. Uh, we try to do that. Uh, you can. Uh, you cannot find a sign of him having passed through the southern gate lately. But somebody says, you know, maybe uh, you can't. You can't locate him. So, yeah. or no. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to um, roll. I don't want to play it out because he's already left. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, I guess we. Uh... Unsatisfying waste of time. You can't catch up with him unless you. So we we head to, back to you our. Start, you start chasing him down the road. Uh, I mean, do we think we could catch him if we could? Well, if he's traveling in normal traveler space, you guys can catch anybody. So it's up to you guys. Um, what what time of day is it? Is it like the sort of thing we it's could the, get? around dinner time? So. Yeah. No, let's let's head back to Leona. Okay. All right. And she's there. She's selling, transacting with somebody, and she smiles warmly at your presence. When she finishes, we're gonna ask her about uh, the two two people in town we know about the the orange orange wristband person, and yeah. um, I think that was it, right? Do you ask about him? Do you mention the orange wristband, or just say his name? How would you how would you ask about that? Say tell me how you would ask about it. Uh, we'd say uh, we we've been told to reach out to one Varick. Yeah. Who is that? Um, 
Varric. Oh, Varric. He's the fool. The fool and the rogue. He's, um, oh, he'll be around here somewhere. You don't always see him. He's pretty good at hiding, but, uh, but he's quite the fool. He's, I think he should have went in the theater instead. Uh, he's, uh, he's a, he's an information monger for sure. Okay. So he would be someone okay. that we could reasonably ask questions to. He might know more. Yeah. He's hard. He's harmless. Um, uh, you know, Bob, uh, um, Bob, uh, uh, you know, doesn't like dealing with them, but I, I find him here. And okay. he usually has good information. So, yeah. All right. Sweet. Um, and when you ask about the madam, do you use her common name or the secret name you've been given? Who, who is the madam? She's the person who may have, may have really good information on everything that's going on around because she has a talent for it. Hmm. I I don't remember what we learned about her. So if someone else want to take a point on that, that's okay. She um, do, 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 do. where is she? Ah, Castle, Madam Castle. She um is uh she was given this information to seek her out uh, by the innkeeper in Long Saddle. Um, you were to uh, seek her out to get. Uh, if you were trying to find the whereabouts of Bob and he's not an oblong, she's very good at finding people. Mm. Very, very good at it. So, Yeah, I think uh, we should probably approach both these people at some point. So anyway, she had, you were given, she's just known as the madam in town, but you were given her actual name, which is like, means that somebody has told you to come see her if you, if you address her by that name. Because nobody calls her for that name, except for friends or friends of friends. So, um, when you ask Leona about her, what do you say? <laughs> the Madam or the Madam Kessel? Probably the full name. Uh, she raises an eyebrow at that very obviously. She's like, "Oh, you're you're looking for somebody uh, to find Bob, really." Oh, yeah, I, I, I can't believe it. he was seen here, but uh, it's very, very reliable, or uh, Boric is very reliable, so um, that's not my fault, by the way, those names, but <laughs> I had them on a list that I pulled them, so, um, but they came from, yeah, they both came out bees and K, K sounds. Um, the, um, uh, he, um, um, yeah, he's just, um, she's still upset about Bob, but she says, um, if you find him, please tell him to drop by, she says very quietly. Um, but um, if, if he's in trouble, come get me. I'll I be think here. I'll be at my home. She tells you where she lives. Um, he, I tell her that he specifically said he's 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 in trouble uh, when I try to send him a sending. Do you know where he is? No. No. You don't. Okay. Try to find him. If you have any hint of where he is, please come get me. Yeah, maybe I'll send you a sending. Yeah. Okay. All right. Pedo can DM, right? <laughs> yeah, I got I got that personal message. Long distance. So uh, she says the madam may be able to find her though, but uh, there's always a price that doesn't money for dealing with the madam. Well, I do have one of these rubies. Um, and, and then I, I, I go with to tell her about the great Peter Bar, and then I realize <laughs> <laughs> uh, I decide not to. <laughs> Yes, uh, she says, uh, well, um, anyways, you you try your luck and let me know if you get here any information. All right. Do we know where the madam is located? Oh, yeah, she's she's just got a shop down on a quiet alley, just not far from here. You know exactly where it's easy to, and everybody knows if you say the madam. Uh, so let's go there. Of our, it's like that's who we'll choose to go first, or should we do the uh, Varric instead of Madam? I guess those are our two options, right? Yeah. 
they both seem like pretty good options. Which one's closer? I mean, Derek seems less sketchy. Yeah, we don't have to pay, maybe. Or it yeah, could be a price that, that is gold, and we have gold. We do have gold, but it's, it, I, I find gold is better left unspent. <laughs> yeah, we can start with Beck. He, we have the in uh, from his friend, anyways. So, uh, double points on relationship starters. Mm -hmm. So, do you tie the orange thing around your wrist or not, orange scarf? Yeah, Pete, Pete will, will tie his uh, handkerchief. Wait, do we want to ask her about it first? Yeah, sure. Let's ask Leona. Is that like a? Are we going to look like idiots by doing that, or is it a thing? Um, he has all kinds of different silly codes. Okay. Sometimes it's write weird letters and chalk on the wall. Really, honestly, he's probably already looking for you if, if you're looking for him. He hears everything. I don't know how people. People keep him around because they think he's stupid and harmless. Or, well, they don't think he's stupid. They think he's harmless. So. Uh, and then he just disappears and then he appears again. So. <laughs> okay. So, all right. I'll put the handkerchief okay. on my uh, arm and try to find him. Two perception checks. Let's see. Again, I'm not sure. Is that so 18 and then 23. Okay. Uh, I got 11 and 18. It says plus 18, 8 on your, on your 11, doesn't it? Yeah, but it shouldn't be eleven. It should be it should be ten plus. Oh, okay. Like so, I can't roll less than a, a ten. Right. No problem. You can't roll less than a ten, or you mean there's plus ten to every roll? No, I mean I can't roll less than a ten on anything I'm proficient with. Right. So okay. the right. fact that I rolled a three there, it should fix that. I'm not sure what right. happened. Like it, it should round up to a ten type thing. Yeah. Yeah. It that yeah. that's my. Yeah. That's what Jeru is good at. Anyways, all right. So, um, yeah. Uh, so you guys walk out. Uh, where are you headed as you exit the market? You see all kinds of tempting, you know, candies and wares and everything. Lots of expensive baubles. <laughs> uh, I guess if we don't know where Varric is, should we just head towards the madam? Yeah, and we'll just wander with our orange uh, yeah. thing. Yeah. And if he finds us, he finds us. Mm hmm Okay. So she's between the buildings up here. Everybody will tell you where, name of the lane and everything like that. Um, as you... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, as you um, as you head up there, um, yeah. Um, after a while, um, interestingly enough, you know, you catch sort of a glimpse of somebody, maybe maybe who's who who just passed an alley that was watching, like walking parallel. Um, I try to. Uh, uh... Dramatically, uh, 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 gesture to him, but, but I'm trying to make him look like how, how a spy would. Uh, yeah. make, I make sure he sees it and uh, make it look cool. your hair with the orange wrapped arm, sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. I do something really extra. Okay. Um, when you approach this bridge over here, uh, a man comes out around this corner, Drew sees him almost before he comes around the corner and he uh he is um uh, he is wearing a cloak <laughs> and, a, and a big hat with a feather in it and 
mask, or like an eye mask in this black and he just comes out and he says, Ah, you're you 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 seek you seek Beric, do you? We we might be. Um Drew, he's confident in how he just sort of blended out of the shadows that you did catch him a little bit ahead, but it was quite confident. It's quite confident. Well, yes, just just bask in my unmatched skill and uh, he grabs you get to tries to pull you or not gently like not because it's not uh, nothing negative around the corner and, uh, right so well, we, we'll we we follow him around the corner okay, he said this in these big long boat builds he's fairly young he walks with a like 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 he's on a stage and he's trying to be seen and then yet at the same time a moment ago he was quite stealthy right so he says um yeah i'm I'm unstoppable. What? How can I help you? I mean, if if I if I deem you worthy of my help. So uh, first of all, we we name drop the uh, the mayor who yep. told us about him. Yep. So he said you'd be able to help. We're not sure if you can. Um, have you seen Bob? Oh, Bob has been seen many times in the last two days, but he's behaving strangely. Ooh, yeah. he's, we're he's trying to deep. find him. Are you able to help us? He's been seen at night uh, with strange fellows, and um, some woman told me that his that he saw her and didn't even recognize her. Somebody who knew him well, so that's what she said. But I don't know; she's kind of crazy. But there's been all kinds of strange behavior. He's been in with the less savory um, types, uh, looking for something. I would guess, yeah. And he holds out his hand. Holds out his tent. Oh, um, palm him a coin. What kind of coin? Uh, it, um, I, I don't know. This would be something Giroux would know. Is this like asking for the the cool coin we got before? Or is this asking for platinum? It's asking for money. He would he would have no way to know you have that unless there's okay. And and what problem. would be an appropriate amount of money for this sort of exchange? Uh, his clothes are worth 50 gold. You decide. That doesn't, so, that doesn't. Yeah, Drew if dealt you, with this sort of person before as a yeah, former okay. merchant and uh, stealthy. How, how conservative do you want to be? Sorry? Give him between, uh, give him between 10 gold and, and 200. How conservative do you want to be? Uh, I mean, for that information, this has actually been helpful. I'd, I'd give him 50 gold. He says, he looks at it, and he feigns disgust, but takes it. He's like, oh. <laughs> he's like, and, and, he just and, bought him a new wardrobe. <laughs> nobody's, nobody's even, uh, he, he actually doesn't put his hand away. He's like, nobody's, nobody's even seen him during the daytime. He didn't visit his usual, his usual friends. He's, he's dealing with strange people. And, uh, there are no reports of, of, of lost children, so I'm not sure what he's doing. Do you know where and, he's uh, where are where is he being seen at night? Is there a location? Oh a last was was um was uh on the on the river pier by the by the by the main gate. So uh but like kneeling with somebody in a boat, this is just rumors, of course. Of just course. rumors. He's very famous. He's got that great voice. Just projects when he wants, or he's quiet when he wants. He says, "You know, by the by the uh, by the Ever Pond, you know, by the Ever River in the Ever Pond, um, down there on that little pier, uh, he was talking to somebody uh, who would pass in a boat. It was like he wanted to talk to them, but they didn't want to land in this thing and come off on shore in the cities. Yeah, that was the last I heard, but um, that was a fairly reliable source. But I don't know." Everybody who's heard of Bob is, is unnerved by this behavior. So. What kind of strange well, folk has he been dealing with? with? What's that? What kind of strange folk has he been dealing with? You said he was seen with like strange people? Yeah, uh, well, it's unsavory people. He's not usually with unsavory people. Drew, Drew roll slide of hand, by the way. Um, uh, it is... Uh, again, can't roll below 10, so 
What do you do when the opposed roll matches? Um, Ice dice. What was your die roll? My die roll was a 13. Okay. So, yeah, so he's got or, the wait, highest. Or, no, 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 my die roll is not a 13. My die roll was a 10. Okay, he's got the highest natural die roll. So he, um, he just sort of brushes your hand off as you do it. Oh, he does spot it. I, yeah. I, I am visibly impressed. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So he just, he just sort of like, just like smoothly, like it's the smoothest thing ever. You don't feel like it was superior to you. You just feel like he's happy to see it coming. Hey, he caught and, me at all. I pop yeah. him another 50. All right. Um, he, uh, he, he, he smiles and uh, he goes for the, the little pin that you were going for, the little brooch that was on yep. the, just, and, and he just hands it to you. Yeah, no, I said very, I, I, it's honestly, very good flair. It's very charismatic, even though yeah. you don't feel like a bond with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The behavior is all right, the script is there, but the, yeah, the, but he's the, not. The, well, I, I hand it back and I say, No, no, I it's no good if not earned. Yeah. It's not pedo though, it's, it's just like it's it's every he does everything right, but it doesn't feel like it's the way when pedo does everything, yeah, like a, a someone trying to get into acting. Yeah. So, anyway, so he, um, yeah. So he's uh, he he sort of looks a little mildly annoyed by that, but that's fine. And he you know, puts it back, and he says, uh, "But yeah, you know, those those people, usually that river dock is is so close to the main gate. You know, all the illicit stuff doesn't usually happen there, so this was unusual. Uh, but it had to be somebody passing from the north. Um. um so yeah. And uh, these unsavory people." Did anyone uh, spot any uh, idols around their necks? Idols. He looks concerned. <laughs> Mumbleberry is your idol. <laughs> is your idol visible? Visible. Uh, the coyote one. Yeah. Oh, that's my belt buckle. Okay, that's on your belt buckle. Okay. So very. Okay. All right. <laughs> He says idols, and he looks concerned anyway. So uh, he's like, "Oh, um, oh no, we don't talk. You don't want to talk about idols. Are you, you sure? I mean, there's lots of idols in town, but you, you usually don't see them. So you have to, you have to explore to find them." So. Well, yeah. I just met with Bob. Was there? He just makes like a a bunny ear symbol. Like he's afraid mm. to say it. Not like the symbol, just like somebody making a symbol. He's like, he's afraid to say the word. Yeah, yeah. Like shadow puppets. Yeah, th yeah, those people. Uh, were they the ones seen with Bob? Uh, I don't know. You don't always know who they are. Uh, definitely the more more of the people that were... When you want to arrange something that the that the leaders and the law in the city uh, would, would frown upon, or even worse than that... Um, these are the people. So he saw, you know, he saw, you know, you know, notorious, you know, brutal thieves that, that you know, kill to cover their crimes. Um, oh, you know, great. Um, Where can we find those people? Oh, my God. Well, you would need to speak their language. And he, and he makes a little thieves can't symbol it, Drew. He knows you yeah. speak it. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, um, and 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 but you'd have to know their codes. You know they. This is this is a, a city of law. The things that are, you don't just sort of walk up and ask for the help of a thief. You know? So you yourself would be able to steal whatever you want. I think he says he gives you a compliment, sort of, but he also does it in a way that elevates him somehow. But I'm not that. I'm not that yeah. Good no, I I play into it and let him think that he is uh, supreme. Yeah, so he's like, I, you would have to know their code. So even I don't know the daily code. Um, you could, if you could quietly, I, if I wanted to know it, I'd have to quietly observe somebody pass it to another. It's usually, usually a handshake or a, uh, or a hand gesture. So you'd have to watch for it and get today's code, and then you could. So you would head to, you would head literally to, to the uh, to the, uh, to the coal market. Which like looks like the poorest place in town, but isn't actually here. It's pretty, pretty good. It's actually just like usually it's people that are just trying to keep on the down low. It's sort of the shittier part of town, 
And uh, yeah, it's just up there. It's a very small, shitty part of town, mind you. End of the coal market and just, uh, you know, pass a symbol and then somebody could show up. So, but you'd have to see the signal. You have to wait for somebody to pass it. I, 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 I could do that for you, but it would cost a great amount of money. No, we, we should be able to take care of that. Thank you. That's yeah. very generous of you to offer. Yeah. Oh, and he uh, he's like, oh, you know, I mean, you're in the presence of the great one now. I mean, of course, who better course. do it for you? And should should we run into trouble, we absolutely know where we can um, find greatness. He seems kind of disappointed. And the uh, perception check from Drew, let's start. Ooh. Good one. Oh, he um, he steps away back to the alley to sort of blend in and melt away. He's pawn the coins, and as he goes, you think he's about to try to give you the pin again without you knowing, but he, he stops and just puts it back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So and he he he's basically gone unless you chase him. So he just disappears into the into the evening nope. dust. No, we, we, I would good. So yeah, yeah, you guys, um, uh, so yeah, he, uh, so that's the information you have. Uh, where are you off to from here? Uh, to the madam. Okay, next madam. session. Next session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hopefully not coughing. Hmm? Hopefully we not have Yeah. <laughs> Rico love. But yes, it's not too bad. It's not necessarily a cough cold. It's more something else. It's more that sort of I need to go to sleep cold. So. Yeah. No, you you yeah. got something. That's uh yeah. that's traveling. That's part of traveling. Yep. Being stuck on a tube with a bunch of other idiots. The, the Someone's gotta be stuck in 